This is the all new Infinix Mat 8 and a direct successor to the Infinix Mat 7 from earlier this year. The phone comes with four major upgrades from its predecessor and sadly two of your favorite features are not in the list. I've been using this device for quite some time now before its official debut and here is what I think about the latest addition to the Infinix Mat series. It's always interesting to see different color variants for a new smartphone and Smart 8 is certainly not left out when it comes to color of choice. It comes in crystal green, galaxy white, timber black and the shiny gold which I got for this review. You can easily find it in 3GB of RAM and 64GB of storage, 4GB, 64GB and 8GB, 128GB of storage for a competitive price of 98,000 Naira respectively which is pretty cheap when you consider the budget smartphone market here in Nigeria. As to the design and build quality, the device is all about the shiny effect all over your face as we've seen time and time again. Both the frame and the rear are made of plastic. The rear looks pretty generic and it's one you'll find across latest entry-level smartphones from Transion, being the mother company to Infinix, Techno and Itel. As you can see from the Infinix Mat 8, Techno Pop 8 and the Itel A70 sharing the same aesthetics. However, what stood out for me with the design is that it's made of a textured matte finish and not susceptible to finger fingerprint marks or smudges. Quite frankly, it's sturdy and has a significant grip for one hand usage. Still on the rear is the Infinix branding at the bottom followed by a huge, huge camera module and a huge flashlight. For optics, the device comes with 13 megapixel rear camera and the depth sensor, same deal from what you get from the Smart 7. On the right side, you have the clicky volume rockers and a power button doubling as a fingerprint scanner which is one among the major upgrades from the Smart series. The Type-C charging port, a microphone, speaker grill and headphone jack are all located at the bottom. And the SIM slot for two nano SIM cards with support for an SD card can be seen from the left. Up front, the device sports a punch hole notch for its 8 megapixel selfie camera. Infinix also brought in the fringe of Apple's dynamic island feature, which they call it Magic Ring, which is useful for notifications, charging status, and call status, which is a nice use of the punch hole area and, of course, adds to the marketing strategy. Moving on to the display, the Infinix Mat 8 sports a 6.6 inches LCD display. While the resolution remains at 720 pixel, Infinix threw in there a 90 Hz of max refresh rate for that extra dash of smooth scrolling, which can be switched in between 60 Hz or auto switch to conserve its 5000 mAh battery, which is one major downgrade from the Smart 7 6000 mAh battery capacity which I think is a balanced specification when you consider the price and the addition of that side mounted fingerprint scanner. Max brightness is rated at 500 nits which is not that legible under direct sunlight. However, in overall the display looks decent when consuming media content indoors and viewing angles are good, albeit the slightly thicker bezels on the chin part of the screen which is certainly not a deal breaker. Moving on to the performance under the hood is the Unisoc T606 chipset. It's a 12 nanometer processor and truthfully not the most powerful chipset for gamers. But for basic usage, it's a decent offering. During my time playing eFootball on 60fps and high graphics settings, the processor proved incapable of running the game smoothly. Again, only basic tasks and not so demanding games can be enjoyed on this device. As to the software, it runs on Android 13 with few changes to the X-ray overlay which can be seen from the control center having a MIUI-like customization. Every other aspect of the X-ray user interface is no different from what we've seen in the past. It's also worth noting that the device may not receive any future Android upgrade as Infinix is known for not doing so, so do have that in mind if you're planning to buy this device and to use it for a longer period of time. Heading back to the rear camera, looking at some of the initial samples I took in daylight with the Infinix Mat 8, the quality seems strictly average as you'd expect from a phone at this price point. It's not that bad of a camera, but it could have been better. What do you think about the camera performance of the Infinix Mat 8? Let me know from the comments section down below. In conclusion, the Infinix Mat 8, in my opinion, is a device I wouldn't consider an upgrade as there are little to no reason to do so if you're coming from Smart 7 or the Smart 7 Plus. However, it can pretty much serve for a first-time Android user or one looking for a budget device to use as a backup phone. A worthy upgrade will be the Redmi 13C that comes with better specs and real value for money. 
So what do you think about the Infinix Mat 8? Would you buy it? The comment section is all yours and also don't forget to like this video and also subscribe if you found value from it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll talk to you in the next one.